at this point in my life, like I want my real estate to be easy because I'm focusing on cash flowing businesses. And guess what happens when you start earning a lot of money? This is a rhetorical question, but like who here is making a lot of money? If you're single, raise your hand. But if you are making a lot of money, you're paying a lot in taxes. And so now I have a bookkeeper, a CPA, a tax strategist, and I'm strategically buying real estate to have to lower my tax burden. And, and so everything that I have, I own because I didn't want real estate to be another job. Uh, and so it's just, I, I just say that because there's so many different ways to make money. You just have to choose. And I just beg you like choose like tomorrow. Like I'm so tired of seeing you guys that you, I saw you last year and you hadn't, you know, bought anything or you hadn't picked a market or you're still nervous. And so like, come find one of us. Like we would love to help you get over whatever's going on up here because that's the only reason that you don't have the portfolio of your dreams. Who's this? Oh, you're an entrepreneur? Oh, you're a real estate investor. Oh, you're trying to learn from those who did it. Well, come into the lab then. Put your white coat on, gloves on, notepad, and let's build y'all. All right, guys, thank you so much, everyone, for being here in the flesh. Oh, man, this is, uh, this is a treat to have everybody here on a weekend where we all get to connect with the people that we love and share insights with and like our partners, our family. Uh, it's really nice. And I know some of you have only connected with you guys online. So like seeing you in person, I'm like, oh, it's like, you're so flesh. tall, you're so short. No, <laughs> but uh, no, but it's nice. It's nice. And honestly, like a huge thank you uh, to Vivian for, uh, this, is, this, is, this is honestly what this is about. Cause we're gonna have our, our partners here share the insights but then like it's more about like who we're sitting with here together right like peter mike and i we got a group chat going with insights constantly it's about this and we want to make this like a fire chat event but i want to thank vivian because she just like pitched the idea she's like ruben we should do something because we've been very very i think open about what our goals are mm -hmm. and our goals are people yep. education partnerships and you're like hey ruben we should network. do something network network and i'm like we should, let's do it. And all you need is someone to plant the seed because you know you found the place, you had the connection, the who, not the how. Yep. And then I thought, okay, well, awesome. Uh, how are we gonna get you know the chairs, right? The, the event, like we got the event. Okay, great, who's gonna cater? Well, my wife, Celine, shout out to her. She's over here. Uh, Isn't the food amazing? We're, we're total planning. foodies too, so like. All right, but, but correction, she's not the, uh, the caterer. She found the who because she has an event planning business which is Sell Sev, so shout out to that. Iris has been checking in people all morning. Yay. And Iris, thank you, Iris. Huge thanks to you because, and Iris, again, a partner, I don't like the word student because she'll say, I'm a student. No, you're a partner in Georgia and we learn together. We're like, okay, Iris can help. And then Iris is here and Iris is literally, one day I called the Ailey Solution. They're like, yeah, we have the, we have Iris Guzman. I'm like, how do you, and like they were talking to me and they said Iris's name. I'm like, you're running Atlanta already. So <laughs> it's really cool because we get a chance to just come together and lean on each other's resources and uh, plant the seed. Yep. And then we get a chance to be together and learn. So, so thank you for that. I know we wanted to thank a few more people before we get started. Yeah, I would love to invite Jeremy up here to speak about Cal Home Company. They're our event space sponsor. So thank you so much. <laughs> Jeremy, I'm going to give you the clicker. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, we won't take too much of your time, Just but we're very grateful that you've chosen to uh, uh, host your event here, and we're glad to share with you. So, Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jeremy Katz, and I'm the sales manager here at Cal Humco. Welcome to our, uh, our uh, showroom and uh, our sales office. Let's see if this... Uh, yep, it's on. Great. So we just wanted to briefly say hello to you and uh, start to make the connections. I know that you guys have a big event coming over the next couple of days. You're going to be meeting a lot of people. So uh, I know that you've already, uh, many of you know one another, but you're new to me. I still like to meet all of you, if, as many as possible, and network with you. Cal Home Co. is a three-part company. Thank you. <laughs> Cal Home Co. is a three-part company. Uh, our main uh, interest is in construction, ADU and additions. Our project started about $200,000. If you're here in San Diego, raise your hand please if you're from San Diego. Thank you, San Diego people. Um, 
We do a lot of work here, mostly with ADUs and construction. Uh, we also do a lot of work with flipping and development. I'll show you one or two of those real quick. And I'm the sales manager of our real estate team. So we have a three pillared company with synergy, right? I think you can imagine the benefits of having a construction, real estate, and investment oriented, development oriented group all working together. I'm the sales manager of that team. We have over 20 agents. If you're interested in Minturb Rentals for San Diego, uh, I'm available to you to, to, to chat about those. And I'm not just a, um, uh, uh, talking about it, I'm actually a member of uh, the midterm rental crew. I do have, I'll show you a slide on that in a moment. <clears throat> So uh, this is an example of the type of flips that we do here, 92131. For those of you who are locals in Scripps Ranch, that's about 25 minutes northeast of here. This is the before and after photos that you're seeing here. The property has a nice pool. So we acquired this one for, uh, I think, in the range of 115 and spent about 180 to fix it and sold it for around 155. So uh, this is typical of the work that we do. We are a premium uh, and quality service uh, construction and uh, sales organization. So al although we're not the cheapest, I think as you may be able to tell, we focus on quality and timely results. Time is money. And right now in San Diego, it's difficult, as you may know, to get permits. Uh, almost all of our municipalities take between six and 12 months to get permits. So it, uh, that is a uh, challenging aspect of working in the San Diego market. Next, uh, an example of the type of property here on the upper left, you're seeing a little cottage property up in Vista. Vista is about 45 minutes north of here. It's located between Oceanside and Escondido, if you're visiting. Um, Vista has a lot of new development opportunity because of Cal State San Marcos and a variety of other employers that are growing in that immediate area. and we. Our team working with the owner of that cottage using seller finance as a way to bridge the gap between uh, getting it from where it is today to these concept drawings with over 20 units. So uh, this is typical of the type of development activity we do, tip, uh, often in combination with creative finance. So we br bought the property using seller finance. We did a rent back on the property to the current owner. They currently still reside there and live there and, and uh, uh, have a uh, generous low rent that they're paying while we get the property entitled, drawn, permitted, and so on. So uh, we're very excited about that kind of project. If you have questions about that, it'd be my pleasure to share with you. <clears throat> well, she copied the presentation, I think, because there was one slide left that I'll have to just do some arm waving and, and uh, uh, for you. But it was a couple of pictures of the midterm rental that I personally do. And I know uh, by, in, by no means I'm, I'm not an expert as compared to, I'm sure, many of you. Raise your hand, please, if you have more than five midterm rentals. Excellent, and more than 10, a couple of you, excellent. And who's just like me, just starting off on their first one? All right, thank you. I feel more at ease because <laughs> I only have Hey, one. we all started in the same place. <laughs> Here you go, dear. Yeah. Um, so uh, my midterm rental is located at my residence. And for those of you who live here locally, it's in Paradise Hills. That's about 25 minutes southeast of here. Most of our midterm, I mean, we have midterm rentals all over the county. Uh, most often, perhaps in the region that's uh, very com uh, easy commute to the hospitals, which is a neighborhood called Kearney Mesa. It's about 15, 20 minutes east of here. My residence uh, is not so close located to those facilities. I found my tenant on Zillow every time now. I've had it now for more than a year. I acquire, uh, work with a savvy agent, look for interesting and, and unique opportunities that are not uh, familiar to the homeowner or even their agent. I bought the property, it is my personal residence. It had a modular home on the back that had electricity but no plumbing. Property, uh, the modular was like maybe 10 by 20 was sort of the shape of it, okay? It's a raised uh, foundation uh, modular home. I, add, I spent about 40 to 45,000 adding a uh, kitchenette, a uh, bathroom, three-quarter bath, laundry. Uh, of course, we had to plumb the unit, add sewer, right? And so these are some of the things that we're able to accomplish. Uh, I've been successful renting it for $18.95 a month. 
I do offer a cash discount to my tenant. So uh, I've been enjoying uh, operating that for now for more than a year. Uh, although I did advertise on Furnish Finder, I consistently found my tenants through Zillow. And by the way, none of my tenants have been nurses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. My name is Jeremy Katz. If I can, help, uh, there was one more comment. Um, oh, if you're interested in connecting up with the us, slide. Some sheets there and quick scan. Let's sheet. advance the slide. Yeah, there it yeah, is. Oh, Thank you. Right up next to the uh, screen. Okay, and uh, of course, call, text, or email me if you want to network with me. It's my pleasure to meet all of you. Thank you for coming uh, to the event. Thank you for uh, checking out Cal Home Co. The QR code is a 30 minute phone call uh, option. You don't even have to take 30 minutes, of course. Um, uh, but it's my pleasure to network with you. Uh, wishing you guys all the best in this event. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay, great. Great job, buddy. Thank you. So I just wanted to share how important the network is. You know, this, this Cal Home Company is actually owned by a dear friend of mine that I've known for 20 years. His name is Hennish and he's just an amazing guy. So if anybody's a realtor here and they're looking to change brokerages, this is an EXP powered realty. And he's an amazing broker because he's been through the mortgage crisis as a um, creative finance and seller person. So he knows all the creative ways to find deals. Um, all right, so really quickly, just a quick thank you to Price Labs. David Veers will be here later today. You've probably seen him on my training for Price Labs on midterm rentals. He'll be here later today, but they uh, are a partial sponsor to the food today. So if you're not using Price Labs or any kind of dynamic pricing tool, you need this in your business. So if you want to give it a try, scan the QR code for $10 off. You can uh, curate competitive intelligence reports. They call them market dashboard reports, but competitive intelligence just sounds cooler. There's, um, you can do MTR and STR pricing tools as well as controlling your calendar. Yeah. And Dr. Rachel talks about this all the time. It's called calendar stewardship in her words and something you really want to make sure that you have in your midterm mental business. Yeah, big all thanks. Right. Big thanks to Price Labs. I know they're not here, but we got to get it on camera. Thank you, Price Labs. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Vivian Yip. I'm the founder of Hestia. I envisioned that we could have a beautiful brand of homes that could encompass all of us together into one brand so that we can deliver a brand value to businesses that use midterm rentals. So that's what we call it the trusted brand in midterm rentals. It's single family home space, premium rentals, and I would love to invite all of you to join our database and become part of our family. So the idea is to find all the super hosts out there on Airbnb with great reviews, premium homes, and bring them under one complete brand. And as a brand standard, we go and audit and make sure that the homes have all the requirements that we expect for a midterm rental. How many of you stayed in, in short-term rentals before that have you know super host status, but you couldn't access the laundry or you couldn't access the garage, or maybe the master bedroom was locked off for some reason or another? Those don't really work in the Hestia space. We want to make sure that the home is for the like available for use for the for the family that needs them. Uh, our company also were we were nominated for the Tower of Excellence Awards at the Corporate Housing Providers Association this year. So uh, really proud of that. And then these are the companies that we have been working with. Um, problems that we solve is maximum revenue and occupancy. We curate high dollar leads. I think on average our leads are more than four to five thousand dollars per month. We help you when there's an opportunity for your home to get booked. Even though you have short-term stays, we find creative ways to either move that guest so they're not impacted or we use other tools to figure out how we can help you host them. And then we also don't really have any bargaining guests because we work with the businesses that use midterm rentals. Um, I don't know what happened to that photo. Okay, well, I'm launching a private mentorship with a small group. So if you're interested in that, you can please scan the QR code and you can get more information into how to join. And in this mentorship, we're not just talking about midterm rentals, but I have a flipping background and real estate investing background. So we'll talk about flipping houses. We'll talk about um, how to renovate a home. We'll talk about finding deals and obstacles and looking for creative finance. So um, it's more than just midterm rentals. All right, Ruben. Hello. Well, first of all, round of applause for Vivian because uh, Vivian, no, honestly, so Vivian is goals because 
I do believe, I always say that when we get into the midterm mental space, whether it, you pick a niche of any kind, I believe there's two assets. One, it's the actual real estate that you own or that maybe you're co-hosting or whatever the case might be, that's the asset. But the second asset is the list, the book of business that you're building, which is an actual sellable separate entity and asset. So what you've done is you're literally dominating the marketplace and you're creating a network and quality control and i think we can all kind of aspire to do something like this in our marketplace and this is why i have a specific buy box that i talk about because you want things to look the same you want to have that that, that structure and you know I, I like calling it like a vertical slash horizontal uh integration essentially yeah. uh and i think you're doing an amazing job so the thing that's powerful too is like when you're doing that it's easy to be remembered because i think of oh Austin, oh, right, I know that's dominantly your place, right, yep. Dallas, right? Texas. Or Texas, Austin. So I think of Vivian first when I have a lead that comes my way, and I think it's 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 uh, in our best interest to build something like that wherever we are. So I do want to give you the round of applause, because you Thank don't you. give yourself enough credit, girl. Come here. <laughs> Come on now, Vivian. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Well, listen, so I have, um, for myself, and I got I, I told Vivian, listen, I'm gonna try because I love to speak as much as I love to listen. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I do. Uh, but there's three D's that I believe are gonna make. Uh, you know, you have a goal. You come here. You come to these conferences. You have a goal, right? And there's three D's that I believe in, right? And I want to cover them and give you guys a little bit of insight. And it's the reason why I'm here. Uh, and the first thing is decision. You made a decision to come here. Uh, but before you came here, you had to make a decision here in your mind to say, hey, I think I want to do this. And then you booked your ticket, you made the investment, that's the second decision. But the truth is, you actually have to make decisions every single day, time and time again. Just having the idea to implement a strategy, whether you learn from this weekend or whether you learn something here, you have to make the decision and time again to continue to make that decision over again. And in order to do that, you have to have a desire. So my goal, that's the second D by the way. Decision, then the desire. Then the desire is what your goal is. Why are you here? What's your, you know, I think I've gone around like uh, uh, Carolyn and uh, Caroline, is it Caroline or Carolyn? Caroline. Caroline, M name matters. I always like to remember that. Caroline and Daniel, right? Letting me know where you guys are at. Okay, you are also got into Texas. Okay, your desire, okay, good. I can connect you with Vivian because I know Vivian is there, right? Keeping top of mind. Linda and Carl, you're in Charlotte. So if I meet someone from Charlotte, oh, have you met Sneha? Sneha's actually in, in North Carolina, Durham. Like that's my goal always to remember. And I think we're also not wired to share our desires a lot because you keep it in a little book. And, but to me, that's a big problem because if you don't share your desires, then we can't help you. And so I think I would encourage you to share your desires because it's a safe space. I love this community. There's an abundant state of mind because when you continue to share desires, then people can help you get to your goals because it's always who, not how. So those are the three Ds. And then the, th the third D is of course the discipline. And this is why there's oh, like, everyone's got like a coaching program mentorship. Yes, you need it. I have a mindset coach. I have a shout out to Rachel. She was a coach for me. At one point I invested in Jesse Vass's course, Rachel's course, even Noble's government. I don't even do government, but there's an insight that I want to get from the people. It gives me the inspiration. So I, what I always say is that you have to be inspired. You have to want trade places with the person that you want to learn from. And if there's a connection there, align with that person. If you connect with Vivian, connect with Vivian. She has resources. If there's a connection with Sarah, connect with Sarah. She has a, an amazing mastermind. Connect with Noble, connect with Rachel, because we, there's an abundant state of mind, but you're going to need those three Ds, right? It's the decision that you're going to make every day then it's the desire that you got to keep fueling that flame and then it's the discipline that you get to borrow from your mentors and and your mentors and your your heroes or whoever that might be or your partners even which i'm very glad i get to call uh, a lot of the folks that are here partners not students no more students uh, but i'm glad to have my 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 mastermind members here shout out my mastermind folks where you where you at oh wait, the building. yeah we in the building i saw a few um but this is what I wanted to offer you because I do believe in giving a lot of, can I steal that? Yep. Ooh, I, nice. Uh, I believe in, um, I believe in like giving a lot of content. So a lot of you guys, I maybe like, you know, you've seen me on YouTube and stuff and I love, I just love content. So I do record a lot of content and I do give a lot of free value. I think we're a thousand videos. We had a thousand videos on YouTube guys. Woo! Isn't that crazy? Uh, we're just under 300 episodes for the podcast, so it's been consistency, discipline, desire. I know my goal is, and I'll tell you, my, I'll be intentional. My goal is to, uh, my, my desire, my goal is to um, understand what your goals are so I can help educate, because if I help educate, then we can create a network where we actually can lean on each other to get more 
occupancy and profitability because that's what we've been able to do right like iris and i know mastermind you get you're getting leans from like these facebook groups that you're in i don't got time for that i don't even know you you're like you're on top of it and you'll drop a lead in the mastermind. Gabby's like sending me things when you're 100% occupied, I do the same. And so we can lean on each other. So if you think you meet someone from your neighborhood and you're thinking that's competition, no, it's collaboration. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Because when you're occupied, they'll think of you first. And when you're occupied, you'll think of them first, mm -hmm. right? So it's in your best interest to make these connections. With that said, I do have a free blueprint that I always uh, share which I, it's on my call to actions all the time get on my email list because that's right like the reason this event is here is we're able to let people know what we're doing so you want to get on that email list so snag that it's also on my social if you're on instagram it's the real estate experiment um but with that said i want to get to <laughs> i was um anybody know who evan carmichael is yeah yeah, so I, I got on a live with Evan Carmichael and he had like this, we talked and then he had this like $50,000 offer and I'm like, how can you like have a $50,000 offer? But then I was like, that's crazy to a mindset, right? So then I thought, okay, great. I'm going to come up with a $50,000 offer. And so I have a $50,000 offer today. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm not even kidding. Uh, $50,000. Okay, so we, you know, Rachel and I, we've done our, our boot, camp, uh, boot camp, we've done summits together, like, uh, we've done like lives, I've done boot camps. And the thing that like happens is it's when people don't have a, a either, if you're in a mastermind, you're good because then you have the, you have the decision, you've made it, you're in the mastermind. Then you have the discipline that you can borrow from people in the mastermind um, to fulfill your desire. But if you don't have that, you can tell people what to do. A lot of my content guys, like if you just watch the videos on YouTube, it's there, it's for free, it's the same stuff. But either you need a guide to borrow the confidence to actually charge the price that we're charging. By the way, if you don't know, we actually specialize in midterm rental contracts at, in, in the insurance space. So like when a tree falls on the home or anything like that, uh, fire, etc., cetera, uh, we are basically the ones to uh, help these families find a, a, um, a, a, a furnished accommodation and we charge a premium for it. So. What we realize is that we can teach people these things, but sometimes just people don't have time to do it. And so I'm like, all right, what's a $50,000 offer look like? Let's just do it for you. And it's a beta, so if you join now, you can do it early. Uh, but because you get access to my team and to me, like we're gonna make sure you, we, we get you guys like what you want, okay? So um, obviously we have receipts. I love receipts, aren't they nice? Uh, and Gabby, I think you're up there. Iris, you're in there too, making that chicken getting that money uh but at the same time you're like helping people right like that's the most fulfilling part you're helping families right uh, but here's my offer but what's pretty cool is that, okay airbnb profile optimization you've heard in the boot camps right tracy where are you tracy right you've done it you're in the boot camps right is, is nice it was awesome yes you just say that one more time for the camera did the camera hear you it was awesome it was awesome <laughs> please but it's, it's simple, right? But it's also, it's another thing to do. Airbnb listing optimization. Why do we go to Airbnb first? Because it's, you know, high traffic area. You still want to leverage it. We leverage, we don't depend on Airbnb. Mm -mm. We still got to optimize. And Vivian and I were talking about like even, you know, duplicating your listings. If I would have done it different, I would actually have a whole different profile for it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, dynamic pricing, shout out to Price Labs, y'all. Lunch is gonna, was lunch good? Yes. Cool. Well, Vivian and I had something to do with that too. <laughs> Uh, copywriting done for you, PMS optimization, strategic listing on top 10 databases, proposals done for you, emails campaigns done for you. Uh, yeah, that's important. You gotta do all that. You can do it in a mentorship or we can help you do it. And no, I'm not gonna charge you $50,000. It might go up to that point at some point, but I'm, but I'm, <laughs> but I'm gonna just test it first. Is it not worth it? It's, and by the way, just, just so you guys know, like it's gonna go, here first, because I said I would do it here first. Then it's gonna go to my email list, and then I'm gonna blast it, and, but I'm only taking a dozen, dozen folks. So just so you know, there's payment plans, because you know, hey, listen, in this economy, <laughs> right? Uh, but if, 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 you, if you have questions, because I know it is a big investment, it's not for everybody, but it's for the right person, uh, just uh, email me, my assistant will be looking out for do it for me, okay? So just take a picture of that if you need to think about it. But action, make it, action makers are money makers, right, Rachel? Yeah. So I'm just saying. All right, so listen, how was that? That was great. Okay, good. Awesome. So, but now, now, why you came, there's the, the style we want to do is, listen, our partners, uh, we want to announce them. Uh, they're like friends, uh, people we admire, people we've learned from. 
uh, people, uh, it's just, it's, uh, it's so heartwarming to have them here with us, right? And it's more, amazing. I mean, most like, of you guys are here for the summit, right? Yeah. And those people that are at the summit won't have the same kind of access that you have to Noble, Rachel, and Sarah. So um, I, it's a real privilege to have you guys here. Thank you so much for supporting our event. Yes. So let's introduce Come our over. speakers. Yeah. Come on over, guys. Come on, Come on over. over. We got some chairs for you we guys. Got some chairs for you guys. After you. Thank you. Oops. Thank you. After you. Yeah. Boss man, you pick. Well, I'll be on the end though. I have to be on the end. <laughs> so we're gonna do a little mic situation because, uh, by the way, shout out to Carly. Uh, Carly, uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna give your handle a, some love. Carly films it. Yeah, can we follow her, Carly on Instagram? Thank you, Carly, for hooking us up today. Give her, give her, give her, give her a round of applause. So we got hooked up with these Ooh, lovely gadgets, and to make sure we're on the audio, we're gonna um, Vivian and I are gonna pass them around. Yep. We don't want to hook you guys up with all the cords and stuff like that. So Vivian and I are gonna. Are we good with the, the placement, guys? I don't want to turn my back to, to anybody. Are we okay? Oh, and feel okay. free to ask questions. We're gonna moderate the time, but Please, we no, no questions. No question. <laughs> Only no, autographs. This is fire guys. chat, guys. <laughs> guys no, no, we, we really do want this to be like super chill. Like, raise your hand, but like, kind of like, we, we talked about this. Like, we got to get out here on time, but if like, we're like, you know, people like us, maybe we can stay a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Johnson Benjamin's over there. That you know way, us. But you know us. Uh, but we do want it to engage. Like, raise your hand, you know, we'll engage, and maybe we'll try to host yeah. this thing, and I'll shut up too. Right? Yeah, we talked about different ways. We talked about different ways to organize this event. We thought a panel discussion would be the most obvious choice because we have three experts from three different niches, yeah. which brings us to the first panel discussion, which is comparing niches. So, um, really quickly, why don't you guys, starting with Sarah, let's talk about what niche you stick with. And you guys know Sarah is a published author with Bigger Pockets. You guys know that, right? Anybody? Did you guys bring your copies to get an autograph? <laughs> Okay, perfect. True. 30 days yeah. stay, All right. y'all. 30 days stay. We're going to play Mike. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Thank you. Here we go. All right. Uh, my investing is like a great cocktail. It only has two ingredients, uh, out-of-state investing and the medium-term rental strategy. So it's very easy to remember. Uh, personally, I like Mezcal. So if you're trying to win me over with alcohol, I, I like Mezcal. Um, but my midterm rentals um, are near, located near hospitals. And so um, unlike our amazing sponsor, most of my guests are travel nurses. Um, and I focus on multifamily. I think you get more bang for your buck, and that's what I do. I buy boring buildings in boring markets. My MTRs are located in Omaha, Nebraska. So yes, Californians, people do want to go there. Um, I have really good occupancy and uh, in Des Moines, Iowa. And I bought in Des Moines, I had never been there. Um, and then I bought in Nebraska while I was living in New Zealand. So when I say long distance, I mean really long distance. So you guys can buy a few states over. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my name is Noble. I don't know why I'm nervous. You know, I, 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 you know a round of applause. Getting intimate up in here, Noble. We're gonna open up that. It, it. That's why, because he knows nobody's about. safe up here. That's why. Safe yeah. really yeah. women? It's, 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 I know, right? <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, so when I when I get when I do get a chance to talk on stage, I'm not nervous, but like this is really intimate, so I'm a little scared. Uh, but yeah, so for me, um, so my favorite as of right now, um, midterm rental verticals are um, the aviation space and the uh, federal government space, and so. Um, we like aviation, something we kind of fell into over the past like a little over a year or so um, because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good cash flow, it's good profit margins, it's easy to run, um, it's just simple. Right, uh, you turn it on and it, it just goes. Um, we like federal government because the cash flow is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so, so, so those are the two that I primarily like focus on and, and help students with. And uh, but I'm here just like you guys to learn from from these folks here. So, <laughs> well, hold on. I think Noble's being a little bit too humble because. We're here chasing around contracts between like one and six months. 
but he gets two to five year contracts. Yeah. 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 From the government. From the government. So, so multiple eight figures. Why don't you guys give it to what he's doing? Multiple why eight figures. Why stick in your buy box? Why stick in your vertical? If he's if he's charging two to five year contracts with stupid cash flow, why stay? Why stay catering to travel and travel and insurance that. contracts? I can answer that. Yeah. So the uh, the reality is is like um, the federal government stuff has the steepest curve on the front end, right? You do. It's like it's worse. Like dealing with the IRS. It's pain, yeah. right? It's the federal government. So Uncle Sam. So it's got the steepest curve on the front end. Once you get past that process, you only got to go through it one time. It has the most cash flow uh, uh, over any opportunity and for a longer period of time, too. So for to Ruben's point earlier, it's for the action takers. You take action, you take the right amount of action. Six figures, seven figures, multi sevens. It's not a, it's not a problem. Right, so eight figures, high barrier to entry. Eight figures yeah. too. The process, definitely a process. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey guys. Good. I'm in Texas, but I have students all over the country operating. Um, so it's everywhere. Um, the latest one I was helping somebody with was in Idaho. So. It literally is everywhere. Yeah. I didn't know anyone lived in Idaho. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Rachel. <laughs> I just absolutely love being here at the door. I was talking about the power in the pre-party. There's so much power in the pre-party, and like Vivian mentioned a little bit earlier, the fact that you're here in the room right now before the event has started, I want you to make sure that you continue to connect with everyone that is in this room because you have built something that is going to be a little bit deeper than when we get into the bigger crowd, okay? So definitely look out for each other while you're there because the connection that Ruben and Vivian just curated, guys, there's nothing like it. I will not forget any one of your faces, so let's stay connected for sure. So I operate in the luxury short-term rental and mid-term rental space. And the reason I call it luxury mid-term rental is primarily because our properties cater to uh, families who are displaced from their homes due to insurance disasters. And I believe having a secondary mid-term rental strategy is important as well. So in my market, the filming industry is a very important um, line of work uh, in, in Georgia. That's one of our primary markets. So. Luxury for me, uh, as it relates to real estate, if you're a realtor, do not come for me. I'm not talking about million dollar homes. Our properties range from 175,000 purchase price to 462 purchase price. And the reason they're luxury is because of how we are setting them up and how we're curating the stays right outside of the neighborhoods of those million dollar homes. So if someone in a million dollar 11 bedroom home needs a place to stay, well, there's not a furnished midterm rental available for them that is 11 bedroom that's vacant waiting for them but guess what there's a six bedroom right and so we get paid at the level that they would expect to pay for the 11 bedroom i see mike stone here i see you <laughs> okay so talk to him about that a little bit later with his forty-five thousand dollar per month contract so the barrier of entry is quite low because um, according to Scientific American, over 3 million families were displaced from their home due to a disaster. There's natural disasters, you see the storms happening, all the things, and then there's accidental disasters. The kids set their house on fire. It's happening everywhere, sadly. So we're here to help and working with the insurance, their pockets are deep. I was telling Ruben the other day, um, not to get political, but I'm, I might say something a little off the cuff, um, there is a former president who actually needed to secure funding for a bond. Who secured the funding for him? Chubb, which is homeowner's insurance. Their pockets are deep. Chubb has $91 million that they secured. Another homeowner's insurance company secured a bond for him for $175 million. So at the end of 2021, they had a surplus of $1.03 trillion just lying around. Hey, baby, good to see you. <laughs> $1.03 trillion just lying around. And so that's why I stay in the space. I absolutely love the space. I do everything I can, right, to, to really connect and network in the space. And so, yeah. 
Yeah. That's a little bit about me. Thank you for that. And I'm going to head that back to uh, Vivian. But real, yeah, give him a round of applause. So. Hold on. I, I just want to plug Rachel. Oh, right. Because Rachel is, I'm a student of Rachel as well. And she's really helped me in my journey as well as my business. So I, just, I'm so, I feel so privileged to be here with you today. Thank you. Always, always privileged. So I want to transition this because a lot of us are coming in and we might be thinking about the next purchase or the next management deal. Uh, and so we heard multifamily, we heard government contracts, and then we heard luxury and short-term rentals. If I want to position, uh, and mid-term rentals, excuse me, if I want to position myself and I say, hey, I want the best of all worlds, uh, tell us a little bit about what's the asset type that you're actually focusing on. And we'll go back in this direction. I know, Rachel, you talk about your two-door strategy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is it the same type of asset? Yep. Is it different? And then how does it compare to what Noble you're looking at and what Sarah you're looking at? Multifamily, I think sometimes is, it can be ambiguous. Is it, you know, you know, is it a sixplex? Is it a fourplex? Is it a 20 unit? Is it duplex? I want to hear a little bit about that. So what's the two-door strategy? Is it the same asset type? And how does it compare to the rest of our uh, team here? Yeah, thank you for asking that, Ruben, because a lot of times we hear of um, a variety of strategies, but you need to really focus on what's in alignment with you, your lifestyle, your family, and all the things that are important to you. So I'm a busy mom. When I first started out, I was working full time in healthcare. Um, have a whole husband, two boys, three dogs, oh right? <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so when I thought about okay, multifamily. Uh, fix and flip. Um, um, what is the one where you're not? Uh, sub, two. sub two. The the one where you're not purchasing it, but you're wholesaling. Really uh, wholesaling. Uh, Thank you. Why did I draw a blank? <laughs> I'm not caffeinated up. Wholesaling. I looked at all of those strategies, guys, and I will spreadsheet the heck out of things, okay? So I created a spreadsheet and I evaluated two things. I evaluated what is my ROI gonna be on this strategy potentially? And what is my ROE gonna be on this strategy potentially? Okay, what is ROE? Is my return on enjoyment, my return on, right? My return on energy, right? So that's as important for me because I was burnt out to a crisp. And so when I evaluated all of those strategies, what was in alignment with me was not necessarily ditching my W-2 and going all in on wholesaling, right? My best and highest use was to leverage my W-2. It was a high paid W-2, getting, uh, taking advantage of the 10% down loan for investment properties. Um, that's something that's out there not a lot of people know about. Everyone thinks you need 20% down, 25% down. No, there's a 10%, take advantage of the 10% down loan, take advantage of my work history, and just purchase a home, okay? And, and that's what I did. I purchased the best possible home that I could find. It was $299,000. It was a three bedroom. It was valued at um, 350K. And then I started to leverage a short-term rental strategy in there. And you know what? This was in 2018. 2018, I got an uh, inquiry from an insurance company. I was like, great, this is a scam. I want nothing to do with it. <laughs> how, many, how many people, right? No, I want nothing to do with it. Um, and we were actually transitioning out of that property. And as my husband and brother were taking the furnishings out, I was like, put it back in because I just got us a, a insurance deal. They um, agreed to $4,000 a month, which I thought was fantastic because long-term rentals in the market were $1,800 a month. But I thought to myself, I toss, tossed and turned that night and I said to myself, you know what, this was too easy. They accepted it too quickly. So I called them back. I was like, well, actually it's 5,000 because you said there were pets, right? Yeah, we're gonna need 5,000. They accepted that too quickly. I said, but wait, we have a, a carriage in the back. <laughs> It's gonna be six thousand. We landed at eleven thousand dollars. Just I kept pushing back, and I was floored, you know. And, and I said to myself, number one, where else am I playing small in my life by just accepting things, wow. right? And number two, how do I do this again? Like, what is this entity? And so that's where we went all in on insurance and we doubled down. So that's really why I'm all in on a bigger home. My buy box includes 
five plus bedroom homes in B neighborhoods next to A neighborhoods. I want the home like 300,000, 400,000 next to the million dollar neighborhoods. Uh, add some value to it, right? We're gonna remove the purple carpet. Y'all already know. <laughs> they have not done anything to the property since the 70s, but we're going to flatten the ceilings, remove all the popcorn and modernize it a little bit and, and set it up to attract that avatar that's in the higher cost of living area. And that's how I get back my return on investment and my return on equity. Love that, love that. And, and Noble, Noble, this is a very interesting because I hear five bedroom plus. I thought it was four. You went up. <laughs> I, I teach. I teach four, but we only have five. Uh, I, oh, I'm like, I'm going four because you told me four. Right. <laughs> People hear five and they get scared. I didn't want to scare you. No, no. By the way, by the way, the basement hack is a is a hack. Hey, Ruben, where else in your life are you not playing? <laughs> I gotta level up. <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger place. Can I ask a question yeah. on the five bedroom? Yes. So do you have a popular request for five bedroom properties? Because I feel like that's more of quite a unique request on insurance. We do a lot of insurance. Yeah. And I, I always think three and four is your most popular. Yeah, yeah. Five, we kind of, we're like, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a great question. So understanding your market uh, demographic is going to be really important. So are you in a market where it's like larger families or are you in a market where it's uh, in an urban area, the big city where it's one or two bedroom, where that's the thing? Never so understanding the... Or nine children. <laughs> With grandparents, multi-generational, multi-family, traveling with children, kids. Like I, I had a family say, imagine cooking for a family of 10 in a hotel. They're in a hotel, family of 10. It's, 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 it's the worst. But what has helped us is we become a market maker. No one else has a five bedroom that is fully furnished. We're the only thing in town, so we do stay yeah, relatively amazing. booked. And I think this time last year, if you're at the NDR Summit, and because we love data, right? Men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. Furnished Finder had like a, a deck they put together. Where they were showing that the f I think it was four bedrooms. Yeah, so four like plus. A, just mm -hmm. a, like there was not enough supply of it. Yes, and that's what we like. Like when there's lack of supply, and you know there's demand, you're always going to be in the forefront of the market. Yeah. And use tools yeah. like Price Labs to help you study your own market because mm -hmm. you can actually see revenue and occupancy in that market dashboard report, yeah. and you could look at it by the room number and see what their nightly rates are. Look at their reviews. Look at their amenities. It's a great tool. Quick, quick tip for anyone at the four or five threshold. I have five bedrooms that I'll often tell the housing specialist. It's a four bedroom with an extra room, and if you'd like it to be an office or a bedroom, we can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. That's just me downsizing my five to accommodate because I have had the pushback. We don't want a five that coming from the three or the That's room. so oh, important, that's Mike, that you said that because yeah. sometimes you can you can play with it where we have four threes. Uh, where at the top it's a 3-2, but if I open up the basement, it's a 4-3, and you gotta be, I love what you said, because sometimes we're thinking bigger is gonna, gonna be better, and sometimes they'll look at the square footage and say, no, we need a four bedroom. Right. So you can kind of position yourself four. around and, that. Yep. And that gem just paid for your ticket for this event. Yeah. <laughs> so, so go ahead, that's, that's, that's almost the question I was gonna ask yeah. you. Do you track it, right? Because how many people are using the four bedrooms for sleeping, versus one of the bedrooms as a split office for the family, right? I, I've got a five bedroom, I've got a six bedroom. Well, two of them are offices. Yeah. My wife's in real estate and I'm tech, right? Yeah. So yeah, we've got a six bedroom, mm -hmm. but we technically sleep at four and the kids are split between them. Exactly. So, and do you, or my, my question will be about tech to all of you, yeah. uh, but do you actually track it? Do you know, uh, do you do any surveys like, hey, is this four sleeping bedrooms and one in office or one a, hey, <clears throat> I'm an athlete, uh, my friend owns Pro's Corporate Housing, four or 500 units. Uh, they service Jeff ath athletes. Almost every single one wants a private gym or a room that's dedicated for focus. They want to work out, they want to get up, they don't want to go to the, uh, the facility, they want to get their workout out, go for a run. So they're designating that third or fourth or fifth room specifically for them. Put a weight room in for them, right? Yeah. Still, still a five, could yeah. be a six. How quickly you can absorb those additional items. Yeah, absolutely. And so we do supply um, a whole gym setup that's in one of our photos as well. Um, but what I have found to be true is that the insurance company is 
to serve, they're supposed to serve as a fiduciary, so to speak, for that avatar. So mm -hmm. if you are coming from a six bedroom, I don't care if you're a single man or a single woman by yourself coming from a six bedroom, they should not be placing you in a hotel. Right. And that has happened time and time again. And I think right now all of you can be advocates for those individuals. I met a woman who was in a hotel for five months. She comes from, she's in McDonough. She comes from a four bedroom home. She's a single woman. They said, oh, you'll be in a, fine in a hotel. Let me tell you, it impacted her mentally. Yeah. It impacted her mentally. So at the end of the day, um, it doesn't matter really what the demographic of the family is. It's where they're coming from. They need to be in a similar um living situation like environment like kind of yeah exactly and also um and i'm i'm just gonna give one tidbit and pass it along uh if there is an accessibility limitation right yeah right we've encountered that so if you happen to have a master bedroom or a bedroom on the main level and the person's coming from a two bedroom and you're the only one in town with a, a bed on the main level and the person has accessibility issues, they can't go up and down stairs, they, they have mobility issues, your five bedroom is going to work for that one individual. Mm -hmm. Your four bedroom is gonna work for that one individual. So yeah. keep that in mind as well. Experiment Nation, you've heard the word MTR, midterm rentals, as it is currently a hot topic and hot commodity right now because Again, there has been an increase in short-term rental regulations, and there also has been, let's face it, a slowdown in what we were experiencing a couple years back when it comes to bookings. So with that said, short-term rental operators are looking for alternative solutions to tap into the midterm rental space. However, there is a space, there is a sub niche of midterm rental insurance that I'm truly excited about that I want to share with you that the experience that we've had, the tremendous results we've been able to have, and that's the insurance midterm rental space, which is very different than your traditional midterm rentals. When you think of traditionally midterm rentals, you think of travel nurses. There is a space, midterm rental insurance space that we've tapped in where you need to be well connected with insurance and relocation specialists and companies and understand the right type of asset required for you to be able to help these families. What's really important that stands out the most, which you can get in what I'm about to offer you is the understanding where to be found by these insurance companies how to properly manage your calendar so that your listings are optimized so that they can find you, how to actually gain traction and build a relationship with these relocation insurance companies. I've put together an MTR insurance blueprint. That's double M T triple R insurance blueprint to cover these foundations after we've had success landing very large contracts on single family homes that literally four X what we traditionally make in long-term rentals and also gives us peace of mind because there's less turnover and a hundred percent occupancy because these contracts can start anywhere from 30 days to three months to eight months and range anywhere from again we've landed anywhere from eight thousand to nine thousand dollars a month in per month on a single family home property which our mortgages are typically around the 2400 range which then gives you a large spread of anywhere from four to six k net on just one property and this is why it's very hot right now but people who haven't been in the lab with individuals like myself like jesse vasquez and dr rachel gainsborough and noble crawford don't have the foundations and don't know exactly where to start and therefore this is why i'm giving you guys a blueprint the mtrr insurance blueprint Go to the, the website experimentrealestate.com and get yourself a blueprint to completely change or at least have a plan B if you're a short-term rental operator looking to maximize your occupancy and profitability. We'll see you on the other side. Uh, definitely, definitely want to keep it moving, but we'll bring it back at yep. some point. Hold that thought. Wanna, don't, hold forget, that don't, thought. Forget. don't forget, don't forget. <laughs> Noble. We're doing five bedroom plus now. <laughs> gotta send a whole memo. To be are under are you doing level. the same? No, no, it's fine. <laughs> are we doing the same or is it like twos, ones? Does it matter for government? What is that, that buy box? Because I want it all. 
Yeah, no, I got you. So real quick, uh, I'm gonna answer that. Mm -hmm. I want to piggyback off what Rachel was saying. Um, I had a couple of students going after an insurance deal. The family was coming from a seven bedroom, oh and um, there was, uh, you know, there the the market was just limited, right? And so there was nothing available on Zillow, nothing on Furnish Finder, nothing on Redfin Realtor, nothing on Airbnb. Like there was nothing, and so they ended up going through an agent who had an unfurnished six bedroom listed. It got pitched on Friday before end of close, you know, for end of business on Friday for 60K a month for a four month, okay? So um, there's nothing else available in the market. And, and so one of them was struggling with, this could be too high, this could be too much, they're having a mindset problem. So if I coached them through that, I said, go grab your 60,000 a month. So come, come before the end of this conference, I guarantee you I'm gonna get a phone call, we got that deal, yeah. right? So just, you know, follow what Rachel teaches <laughs> because she knows what she's talking about. And I pay attention, <laughs> right? So as far as the government goes though, so the thing with the government is whenever they have a need, it's typically gonna be in bulk, right? A lot of something. It's no different for lodging, housing, real estate, stuff like that. Now there are some one-off opportunities where single family comes into play, but for the most part, it's typically gonna be in bulk. And so in my case, it's not so much about buying properties, it's more about leasing those properties because I'm typically dealing with multifamily. Right, and I might need 20 of something or 50 of something, or we're working a deal right now, 300 doors, right? And so, um, so it's very much a lot of volume involved. And so, for us, we're constantly on the lookout for multifamily, uh, you know, multifamilies that want to partner with us in these opportunities. Um, but to that extent, also, um, my my wife and I. So my wife is a commercial real estate agent. So we've recently started getting into purchasing multifamily. You know, so we got a we got one under contract right now in Houston, but to to leverage for this purpose, right? And what is the unit mix? I think two ones, one ones. Um, so a combination. So so here's the thing. What's the what works the best is when the bedroom and bathroom count match. Mm. That that works the best, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one ones, two two, stuff like that, right? Now you can still work yeah. with a you know with a two one and stuff like that. Um, but but that works the best for the for, for government purposes. Who's the avatar? Um, so quite a few actually. Um, so there are over 400 federal agencies, and people don't realize that or understand that. And a lot of them um, either provide training for employees or they're engaged in something for contractors, which is really big. Um, and so it just it, it runs the gamut. Um, but basically, they're either federal employees, they're either um, contractors with the federal government, um, they could be military service members, that's that's the case a lot of the times. Um, and so, uh, but they have some sort of affiliation um, with the federal government, right? And so the reason we like that avatar is because typically those type of personnel um, are vetted at the highest level. You know, so when you're dealing with, like we do, when you're dealing with multifamily, you know, what is the norm? Okay, they need to make three and a half times the, the rent, right? They need to pass a background screening. They need to do this, that, and the other. Well, at the federal level, when you get vetted at that level, um, there's no higher level of vetting, right? And so when we're able to go in and have a conversation with, pro with, uh, with the property management or with ownership and say, like, look, this is not a problem tenant, because that's one of their pain points, is we're de dealing with problem tenants. Yeah. Absolutely not. Like, and once they understand who that, who that avatar is, who that guest is, is gonna be on property, green light right another thing they want to know is you know um you know another pain point is they want to make sure rent's going to be paid right well this is a federal contract is guaranteed right it's guaranteed to the extent that you know here lately we've heard about government shutdowns you know past few years is the government going to shut down this that or the other if in fact that happens guess what continues to get paid out federal contracts even during a government shutdown. So it's guaranteed revenue, it's coming. It's coming every month, like clockwork, you know, the first of the month, um, without fail, right? And so, um, so for them, you know, that's music to their ears. They have maybe an occupancy issue, right? We can solve that. We can get you to 100% potentially in some cases. And you can, you can stay at 100% makes the asset more sellable. Right, so there's just a lot of a lot of strengths um, to to that type of avatar. Noble, I'm just gonna say out loud what everyone's thinking here. How much per room? Yeah, it's a good it's a good question. And for how many months? Yes. Um, so it can vary. That's the short answer. It can vary um, by market, um, and sometimes 
a little bit seasonality, but um, the best way to find out, you know, is to is to look it up. You can Google it, right? So those federal nightly lodging rates they fall under what's called the Government Service Administration (GSA) GSA lodging per diem. So for any federal employee, contractor, service member, whatever, they qualify for that rate. Now that rate is a ceiling; it's a nightly ceiling. But so for our market, it's one sixty-seven a night. Okay, so times 30 nights, that's $5,010 on a one bedroom, one bath apartment. Okay, so when you're paying, you know, $1,600, dollars for rent, a couple of hundred dollars in expenses, nice spread. When you stack those, that's where it gets crazy. Okay, $96 Yeah, and then additionally, you can, there's also parking that you can add even on top of yeah, that. Yeah, you, you can. So you can yep. $20 a night for parking on top of that. Yep, okay. absolutely, 100%. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. All of us are like, what? <laughs> I'm gonna leave a lot of money on this. Yeah, no, I mean, but, but seriously, though, what's fascinating about this is, and I think, you know, um, I've been talking about our model to a few individuals, I think we're talking about why we love it. I love B2B because of those reasons, right? You can, there's a laundry list of items that you can charge for. Even in the insurance space, they'll oh, say, yeah. is parking included or not? You can be like, yeah, I have a driveway, but I think free. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Wait, I, I know there's a lot of single family home investors. Else. Like, like, like a hotel, you know, you've got your, your room rate, then you've got your parking in a hotel. Yeah. And that's how they set up the GSA. Resort, Resort fees. fees. <laughs> 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 okay. No, Noble, does this work in the single family home space? Good question. So it, it can, it can, right? So, um, you know, I was helping a student with a, a submission recently that uh, was through the Veterans Administration. And so the Veterans Administration, they were looking for specifically single families where they could house um, veterans that were, um, you know, that were having some sort of like medical treatment at the VA hospital, right? But they wanted to keep them nearby because they had to go back periodically, you know, to, to check in and, and get post-op, you know, uh, treatment and stuff. And so they were looking for single family homes that they could house um, uh, vets in per room, right? Um, and it was up to $1,800 per room per month, per bed. So you got three or four bedroom, mm -hmm. like that cash flow is real nice, right? Yeah. So there are opportunities like that, yes. Yeah. And additionally on bigger homes, if you put two GSA, you know, say two government contractors in into a four bedroom house, now you can use the per diem, like you're in San Diego, it's 194 a night, but you can do double per diem. You yeah. can charge it twice. Yeah. So you're talking you know, $400 a night, 100%, 100%. We're, we're actually doing just that um, with with a deal. We're in, and it's an apartment, but it's a two bed, two bath. Uh, but because of that second bath, and they share a common living and kitchen, uh, but we're doubling that 167 a night. So our two bedroom, two baths are doing 10 grand a month. Right. You're right. Yeah. You know, and so, and, and so it's just it's just crazy out here in San Diego because I don't get out here that often. <laughs> but if, if if you guys have seen um, as you cross over the bridge, the Coronado Bridge. Uh, the shipyards off to the left and the right, that's the big deal we're working. The 300 door deal is for that. Yeah. Yeah, they typically come in for about five, six months at a time. Yeah. They'll be on a contract, they're outfitting them. Yeah, and that deal is that deal's five years. Wait, but, but who's the client to sorry? It's the Department of Defense, it's the, it's the Navy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I did 10 years in the Navy. Ship goes into the yards, we're in for two, three years. Yep. Uh, nobody lives in San Diego. Well, one quarter of the crew lives in San Diego. Yep. Where's everybody else live? Uh, yep. 500, 500, 500 other shipmates on a, on, on a ship. They're not done with you, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, good, good, good question. Yes, furnishing them, furnishing them, but we're. You talking about the units themselves? Um, so depending on depending on the speed or how quickly they need them. Sometimes they need them quickly, depending on the contract. Sometimes you have like a four or five, six month window. Um, so it depends on that. But more often than not, we're looking for something that's more ready to go, right? We're looking for something ready to go. Uh, we do furnish those. We are not buying the furniture, right? We're not coming out of pocket. We're renting the furniture. That cost is baked in on the front end before bids even submitted. Like we know what our, we know what all of our expenses are. That's one. We know all of our expenses before we even uh, go after the solicitation. What's your deal flow like, the contract velocity? How many are you doing in a month or a year? I guess I'm inundated with helping students. So I, I, I'm inundated with just helping students. Like there's there's way too much that comes down the pipe. Um, 
that all of us in this room can handle. There's just way too much. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm just talking about for housing. Um, it, you know, so when you, when you kind of think through, I like to explain it this way, like the U.S. federal government has the single largest accounts payable department on the planet, like period, <laughs> right? And, but, and so, and, 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 so uh, and a lot of that, a lot of those funds are allocated toward government contracts, right? And then a percentage of those government contracts are even further allocated towards the small business, right? The small business owner, right? Exactly. Minority and then if you businesses. Yep, if you fit in like a socioeconomic group. Guys definitely wanna keep keep us moving. KP, I think you had a, your hand raised. Yeah, I just had a quick question, right? So with all the different I guess opportunities you have in the government realm, do you need to have a sum of up for all of them? Or is it just specific departments that you need a sum of so you okay so let me i always always recommend you get your entity registered through sam sam.gov is the federal system you can register online um is it a hundred percent absolutely required no there are some opportunities you can get in even as a subcontractor and you don't have to have a sam registration however um they look very kindly on you being registered in the system right i'll put it like that so probably an hour but you have so many units what property management software like that. Yeah, good good question. Yeah. So here's the here's the thing. Um you, Yeah. Here's the thing. Um you can use your you can use STR software. So um you know, one of my one of my students has a, a really big win. He uses Guesty the Guesty Pro version, the higher end Guesty version. Um but here's the reality. This isn't like STR. So you're not dealing with turns all the time. You're not dealing with like um guests having to pay through that portal or anything like that the government is sending a check once a month and it's electronically deposited to your bank account right it might turn once a month once every two or three months right and so um really the you tracking aspect too i mean who's in this unit what's their name what's their application all that type of stuff i guess yeah so you can use standard str so we use logify for ours um we have for years um he uses guest pro but you can use standard str now see i started at strs before i turned this switch on so I was already kind of doing the STR thing for, for a few years before I started adding the government contract element. And, and I was like, well, this software should fit the bill and it does, it works. It's, it's the cadence of turns is so yeah. far fewer than a traditional mm -hmm. STR. I love that you just said, and we're gonna transition over to Sarah in a second, but I love the, I'm always very, like, I pay attention to how people say things because it matters. And you said, we turn the switch on, and I think what's fascinating, we all have like the same asset type, or some of us do, but we don't have the right information to turn the switch on. And I think yeah. if we can take that away, it's like, well, I have this too, and I can turn the switch on, kind of like people know LTRs, and then it's like there's midterm rentals, or yeah. there's midterm rentals, and there's midterm rental insurance, and then there's government contracts. It's the same type of asset. You just have different knowledge that you're able to implement. And, and all skills on. are transferable. It's, it's, isn't that fascinating? Yeah. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm just geeking out. Real quick, before we go to Sarah, I forgot a quick, uh, this is my mistake. Um, if you need to use the restroom, you don't like hold tight. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but we can hear you, so. <laughs> Turn on the faucet. Uh, and definitely help yourself with food that goes to you. <laughs> I feel terrible. Like, that's what a host I am. And then as far as like, uh, like any emergency, like if there's a fire over here, there is an emergency exit in the back there where John just came out of. Like impeccable timing, by the way. So I just want to let you guys know that, and I should have opened up with that. So, and uh, if you need to grab food while we're talking, don't hesitate, because we've got to finish the food or not leave it. <laughs> cool. Sarah, great transition, flipping the switch. Yeah, everyone go get food in the bathroom. It's Sarah's turn. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm confident. I don't care. <laughs> Just want to make sure everyone's confident. Uh, but, but Sarah, your transition, you know, was it always MTRs or, you know, and, and let's talk about, because we talked about four bedrooms, you talked about, I love that, two ones, uh, sorry, two twos, one ones, it's got to be a match. What about you? Is yeah, so, so when I got into real estate, I took my time. I house hacked and then I moved to Argentina because I was focused on my lifestyle. I had a job that let me work remote way before it was cool, way before COVID. And I, that was what I was focused on. And then two years later, I house hacked again 
a year and a half later, I house hacked again. And then that summer I did burr, burr, partner, partner, partner. Because I was like, oh, this real estate thing, that's how I'm going to quit my job. And I know for a lot of you, you want to quit your job. If you're next to your boss, don't nod as vigorously. Um, but that's what I wanted. And so I wanted, it's interesting, it's like I wanted to go fast, but not at the expense of my lifestyle. And so like I love what Noble's talking about like and being really honest with you guys about the upfront costs and so when starting a business like you have to look at like is there a J curve so like are you losing money losing money losing money and then you're making money mm -hmm. and so meanwhile while I was building my portfolio I was also building profitable businesses that also fit my lifestyle and so if you're saying the audience like wow that all sounds like a lot of work uh, it can be but it doesn't have to be and so you just have to really fit choose what fits into your lifestyle. And so for me, it wasn't sexy. It was boring duplexes in Kansas City, Omaha, and Des Moines. And I bought all of them while I was living abroad uh, or a few states over. And so it was, it was slow and then it was sudden. And so if you're sitting there and you're thinking like, yeah, but I just like own a duplex. No, you don't just own a duplex. Like you freaking own a duplex. And then I discovered that I could get two to two and a half times rent by furnishing it and renting it as an MTR. And so my kind of like perfect scenario is I buy a side by side duplex, not an up down. I buy a side by side duplex. I make one side LTR because you probably inherited a tenant. And then the other side you turn into an MTR for increased cash flow. And then you wait and you see how well performing is this MTR. Should I go ahead and furnish the other side or is the other side easy? Because like at this point in my life, like I want my real estate to be easy because I'm focusing on cash flowing businesses. And guess what happens when you start earning a lot of money? This is a rhetorical question, but like who here is making a lot of money? If you're single, raise your hand. Um, <laughs> but if you are making a lot of money, you're paying a lot in taxes. And so now I have a bookkeeper, a CPA, a tax strategist, and I'm strategically buying real estate to ha to lower my tax burden. And, and so everything that I have I own because I didn't want real estate to be another job. Uh, and so it's just, I, I just say that because there's so many different ways to make money. You just have to choose. And I just beg you, like, choose, like, tomorrow. Like, I'm so tired of seeing you guys that you, I saw you last year and you hadn't, you know, bought anything or you hadn't picked a market or you're still nervous. And so like, come find one of us. Like we would love to help you get over whatever's going on up here because that's the only reason that you don't have the portfolio of your dreams. Holy smokes. What a perfect segue. Thank you for Dare I grab this? Ah, yeah. Thank you. Sarah's not only fascinating at how she builds her life, but she's also really good at finding deals and then finding ways to fund them. Yeah. Right? So she's like exceptional. And she's the youngest of all of us oldies here. And I, I just, I admire you so much and your courage. It's, it's incredible. Can I just a quick question? Because you're marketing, yeah, I'm you're, you're not an oldie. Towards Second tier healthcare. cities. Right. Second tier <laughs> cities for healthcare, right? So I'm in healthcare, I'm in a major city. Mm -hmm. I would never think to pick those cities. Yeah. So how, how did you have insight? Like, were you just picking that market based on the numbers for the deal? Mm -hmm. And then it fell upon your lap that travel, medical staff work for that model? Or did you know? Because I've never heard of any on PT, doctors, nurses, you know, all the things. Never heard of people say, I'm going to go to Nebraska. Because we don't talk about it. <laughs> That's not going on Instagram. <laughs> not sexy. Yeah, was, yeah great like, question. Was it simply just based on the real estate numbers or? Yeah, great question. So I buy all of my real estate focused on will this work in my portfolio for the next five to 10 years. And so I'm focusing on population growth. I want people to move there. People do move to these cities, you guys. Um, and, and the data shows. And why are they moving there? Job growth. And then wage increase. I want them making more money over time because you guys know your taxes go up, your insurance goes up. I need to charge more rent. And then home values. I want home values to go up. Are we seeing sexy appreciation in 
Nebraska. No, but it is beating the national average. And so that's what I was looking for. And then the last metric I look at is crime. That's the only one we want going down, not only because we want our tenants to be safe, but I also want insurance to stay low. And so I'm looking at those five metrics. And then I, I what, everything I do is very intentional. And, and the properties that I chose were near hospitals that travel nurses were going to in droves. And so, yes, I thought the same thing. I was like, oh my, why? Um, the number one spot for travel nurses was Hawaii, obviously, um, but I'm not buying property there. And the number two was Omaha at the time. And so that's why I focused there. And then I also was admittedly, I was looking at Columbus, Ohio, Oklahoma City, Tampa, Austin, San Antonio, and a mentor was like, knock it off. None of those agents are taking you seriously because you're do, you're looky loo. Like you're not committing to one one market, and so I committed to one market, and I went under contract that week. And so when the agent feels like you're just looking around and God forbid you want to pick their brain, they're not sending you the best deals. And so my agents were sending me great cash flowing deals and I went under contract and I closed. And so then what did they do? They continued to send me really good deals. Yeah. 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 Tracy? Yeah. Um, how are you finding your, your agents? Once you found your market, did you find your agents? Yeah, great question. So let me be the first to say that your real estate investor friendly agent, they are not friendly. They are not the one that's like, they're not, you know, the prettiest billboard and they're probably not the person that's going to list your house should you ever choose to sell it. My investor friendly agents, I only want them good at two things. I want them to be great at finding deals and getting me to the closing table. They are not there to research the market. They are not there to analyze the deal. I analyze the deal. And so an investor friendly agent needs to find deals send them to you and then ensure that you get to the closing table so they're probably pretty good at negotiating if they're not step aside because I am and so that's what I want for my investor friendly agent and I think that investors expectations are too high you like want them to be shiny and nice and text you back and answer their phone I, I don't care I don't care just find me deals and and so how did I find them I found them on Facebook because I was living in a van in New Zealand, not down by a river, but by a beautiful waterfall. <laughs> and I didn't want to change my lifestyle. I wasn't going to like go to Omaha. Because my first property that I bought in Kansas, I did door knock. I was knocking on doors. Hi, my name's Sarah. I'm moving back here. I want to buy your house. Uh, no, it was an investment property uh, that I house hacked. But, but for, new, but for my, that chapter in my life, I was living abroad. And I knew that there was no other way. And so I wasn't going to send mailers. I I didn't want to do cold calling. I had a job. And so I focused on Facebook and then I joined, well, if you guys were taking notes, this is exactly what I did. I joined all these Facebook groups. Yes, Gen Z, we still use Facebook. And I would go to the little search bar and I would type in Omaha real estate, Omaha investing, home buy and sell, whatever combination of words. And I joined all these groups. And then this part's really important. I would just lurk. I became a professional lurker and I had a spreadsheet. I was a journalist before this. So like I take a lot of notes. I ask really good questions and I had a spreadsheet and I just started taking notes on basically everyone in Omaha and it's like, okay, Ted owns a lot of real estate. He's always posting about it. I like his energy. So we're going to be friend Ted. Uh, Kevin is a, is a whiner. He's always bitching and moaning. So I'm never going to talk to Kevin. And so I slowly built this list and you, you start to learn really quickly who's actually doing doing it the work versus who owns one property but yeah yeah they're the loudest and so what I did is I befriended these people who owned a lot of real estate because who owns a lot of real estate people that do stuff right and then I asked them I said hey I'm looking for an agent that actually will find me deals who do you know and that's how I found my real estate investor friendly agents yes about that specifically. how does an agent know how to find you deals and I asked with context if I just held a real estate meetup of my own sponsored by a couple of realtors who we were holding out as investment property realtors. Their clients are high end, really, really high net worth clients. But they have no idea about mm -hmm. the deal. And you also mentioned it's not their job to do so. So what is that balance? What does your agent need to know about a deal to bring you a deal that's not a complete waste of your time? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So at the beginning, I was teaching them. And so if I have to, I will teach your agent too. I charge a lot of money to do it. I'm happy to do it. Um, and so I was teaching some of them. And if they're hungry, especially if they're young, they're young and hungry, they'll like put in the work. They'll do the mailers. They'll, they'll do door knocking. Um, and then I got to a place where like, you know, I got a reputation for like, I will get to the closing table. And so then I was getting agents that already knew how to do this. And oftentimes they do own real estate, but you don't want them to own too much real estate because what is better than being a real estate agent, being a real estate investor. And so you actually don't want them to be that successful at being an investor because then they'll stop being your agent. <laughs> and so, yeah, and they'll take all the deals. And so I wanted an agent that was really good at finding them, but probably not very good at funding them or he would have bought them himself. Yeah. So you just basically encourage them to say, I'm going to show you what I need. If you find a bunch of these, I already have money or the investors, and you will make money on your commission. Exactly. Yeah. You, guys, you, guys, you guys used a term earlier, right? You guys were talking about um, you know, competing against each other, right? I mean, it's competition, right? We use Collaboration. Co-opetition, right? <laughs> all boats rise, right? If you're making a lot of money and I'm making a lot of money, we're all doing something yeah. similar. Uh, you know, it just makes it really, really easy to participate in whatever the deal is, government, midterm, short term, yep. you know, we're all doing really, really similar things. Interesting to see. And then you, you guys were talking about, um, you know, the use of a property. We've used something, we're from the tech space, Eric and I, right? And he, you were saying about Logify. So who's been doing this more than 25 years? Okay, right, 25, almost 30 years. So I've been in the STR, MTR space since about 97, right? We invented software. I know the CEO of Logify and all these guys, and yeah. we built this style technology. But the, the one thing that we focused on that you guys you guys are talking about is use of the property. Right? Mm. In our term is managing the utility of a rental. I don't care if it's long term. I don't care if it's short term. I don't care if it's mid term. The address 123 Apple Street is 123 Apple Street. Whether you need it for school, you need it for insurance, you're a track star, you're a sports guy, you're living, you're gonna move there with your family. It's what are you doing with that with that unit itself and how do you manage it? So yeah. Yeah, interesting to talk with you guys about yeah. what those what those uh, yeah, I wanted to chime in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to chime in uh, to say that I don't host travel nurses at all. Uh, my sister is a travel nurse, so no dig on them. I love them to pieces. Um, just because, like you said, the utility of our properties four, five, four, five <laughs> <laughs> bedrooms plus is not going to be an ideal asset for a travel nurse. Right, so they want a one bedroom, they want that privacy, they want their own bathroom, they've had a long day at work, they don't want to interact necessarily with others and who stole my sushi in the fridge, right? So they want their own dedicated space and I learned that the hard way, I actually um, launched my very first midterm so for travel nurses and then I said, okay, travel nurses, why is no one renting my property? I posted on a Facebook group and they're like, you're too high, and okay. and since we got some tech guys, maybe there's a potential solution to our problem. Right? Real quick, one that if you yeah. can solve with money, it's not a problem. Like bookkeeping. Oh my god, you can. I hate bookkeeping, uh -huh. and I tried doing it for the first year in my business forever, yeah. and I got a 50 percent in accounting 101 for a reason because I hate <laughs> <laughs> the only numbers that I like are the ones in my bank account. Yeah. 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 So I decided. <laughs> a bookkeeper and it completely changed my life. Yeah. So that's an example of if, if, it is, if it can be solved with money, it's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Any the difference between short term and mid term rentals is the is the accounting. You know, you've got <clears throat> with the short term rentals, it's a one off reservation. You send it out, you get a booking and it's done. But with these mid term rentals, you've got reoccurring billing. And that's that's the difference between these STR products and really having a, a, a mid term product that can handle the distribution, that can handle the account, that can send out you know, invoices. Are you invoicing for the first month and a half, or is it a rolling 30 days? Is it gonna be at the beginning of the month, or are you starting on the move-in date? Things like that, um, the, yeah. the shorter terms, I used to work for Streamlight, um, had that problem. Uh, when we took it to the corporate housing market, it was that reoccurring billing. It was the accounting that became so the problem. Here. And mm -hmm. those are the issues, so that's something technology We'll hopefully one day get there. Yeah, Rachel, I'm curious. I'm, I'm thinking about you know your mastermind and all the people yeah. that you've helped. What's the common 
maybe maybe it's we're getting in our own way sometimes. But what's yeah. the common obstacle that you're hearing that could serve us here as we're having this gathering? I would say is a lot of times it's not just a, a very complex problem that comes up, but it's the simplicity of just taking the next ap- action. You spoke a little bit about optimizing your listing, optimizing your profile. These are things that are very well known in our space, but when I have members in the masterminds, they come to me and say, I'm not getting any inquiries. The first question I ask is, let me take a look at your calendar and we're gonna pretend like we're an end user and let's try to book a 30 day stay in your market. Surprise, surprise. You've got two night bookings peppered all over your calendar. You don't have a listing that is optimized for 30 day stay. Of course, you're not gonna get any inquiry. So it's, it's as basic as that. This is something we talk about every single time. You have to have availability to draw in this avatar. If you don't have availability, you're not gonna get an inquiry. So no offense, if you're not getting inquiries, it's your calendar is out of sync, your calendar is out of whack, and you're not having those conversations first and foremost. Like it or not, Airbnb is the Google for temporary housing. And although um, the insurance companies, a few of them do not leverage Airbnb, but the end user does. At the end of the day, I don't care if my house burnt down, you you can't put me anywhere. I'm gonna look for a property on my own, I'm, I'm picky. <laughs> I may be broke, but I'm bougie. I want to be, I want to be somewhere. Make me feel something. Where right? I got these kids, they've gone through something. I want them to be in a space that has a little bit of a, a you know, family-friendly, fun aspect to it. And so, still, it's important to leverage the tool that we have with Airbnb. Don't love it, but it is a tool that a lot of our members aren't using. Just optimizing that listing is, is it'll take a couple hours, but it's well worth. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So when you say that, is it kind of like the J curve thing where you have to basically take the leap of faith and like cancel all your, or like there's draw a line in the sand where you like stop taking short term rental bookings so that you can have a 30 day period where maybe you're, you're making zero money, but now your, your calendar is available for the forward look through for you to start getting these inquiries from midterm rental like insurance claims and things like that? Is that what you mean? That's a great question. Not necessarily. So I have trust issues also and I'm yeah. I mean it's, it's hard it's hard to turn the boss off yeah. and then go like, oh it's gonna come. You know what I mean? Like, right. So, so there's going to be that period where you're going through those two night stays. You want to make sure that you fulfill upon them, possibly. I know it's controversial. There, there are different uh, ways to navigate that. But a tool like Price Labs uh, has a length of stay, um, a length of stay restriction uh, that you can customize. So, for instance, today is Sunday, is it? It's 21st. 14 day length of stay. Don't take any bookings out because everyone's going to book 4th of July weekend. Exactly. And now you can't take that four month stay. That would include the whole summer. Exactly. So for the next few days, you know, I can take a two night booking, but the further out that I go, I have a restriction that does not accept two night bookings. And that's what uh, Vivian was talking about. My calendar, the Gainsborough calendar stewardship, the further out you go, you know, you want to restrict it to ensure that you have the opportunity to take advantage of these lucrative 30, 60, 90 day stays. So that's how we're avoiding those two night stays peppered all over the calendar further out. And, and, and the thing is, when um, a family reaches out to you, it's like an emergency, I need the house today. It's not going to occur today. Like everyone relax, (laughs) right? Relax because the insurance company takes some time. So for the next 10 days, know that it's going to be locked up with the adjuster and all of that so what do i say they're like is it ready today oh yeah it's ready today mm-hmm. it's always ready now it's, it's ready right now it's not so i have that 10 day buffer what, right what to, is the typical booking window the booking window what, what's a typical booking window for an insurance company 30 days out 10 days out oh no it's it's, it's urgent it's within seven yeah we have a fire it's a yeah. yeah yeah it's within seven to ten days is when they're moving in yeah. but the conversations are happening every day you think it's going to be today it's I mean, not that's the thing is if yeah. you're running like a, a hybrid business model where you're short-term and midterm mm-hmm. and you're gonna have short-term rentals that are probably a month to a month and a half out so if, no. if you're booking, that's, that's, that's the you restrict your calendar 
Yeah, so you know, Paul, it's like, I'm not accepting not someone. We get inquiries all the time for June, July, not with our strategy. We're not accepting now. You're saying you're only taking church minute bookings up to like two weeks. Up until the 14 days, 10 long. days. And I'm not gonna up until 10 days. The software is doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that, I get that. No, but I'm just yeah, yeah. level saying because I think it's important. Like, you can leverage technology because some people think they have to manually do it. Yeah. You can actually set and the And it's rule, a moving right? rule. Right? Mm -hmm. so yeah. Maximum like the Outside stairs. of 30 yeah. days, you, you gotta be paying like 5X yeah. what yeah. you would typically pay. 400. Oh yeah, you do like 400. I do 400X. Yeah, yeah. And, and I got an <laughs> accidental booking. I was like, okay. <laughs> 400X, yeah. <laughs> it was silly. Uh, so curious, how does that look in your world, uh, Noble, right? Because we're talking about um, we're talking about the obstacles, yeah. bottlenecks. Mm -hmm. What are your students? I mean, I heard 400 different federal, like, it, is it that? Is it, you know, the leases? Like, where do you hear is the biggest pain point for someone who's getting into the space you're, you're, you're in right now? Yeah, so the primary thing is, you know, getting started is just the education piece, right? Just knowing, like, what to do. Um, once you understand that, it's just it very much rinse and repeat. Right. Um, so this space this is a numbers game. Right. Um, so the more opportunities you go after, um, the more chances you have of, of, of winning something. Now, um, I will say that, you know, in addition to that, um, people struggle with uh, the relationship building part with federal employees. They get worked up because they're federal employees they're these high up people they put their pants on one leg at a time just like we right you can literally pick up the phone and call them on a monday afternoon and they will answer you can engage in a conversation with them and why is that it's because it's in their best interest to listen to what you have to say because they're responsible for the success or failure of that contract and so anything that you have to say that's going to help them do their job they're all ears right They'll respond to emails. So people get all hung up. They get nervous. I like to tell my students, just get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, because it's a mindset thing, really. Yeah. Um, so it's the relationship building piece and then the, the, the knowledge piece. And once you can, you know, nail those two things down, um, it, it's game on at that point, right? So, so on the insurance side, they're typically, we're typically speaking to the relocation specialist. Yeah. Who's the person on the other side of the government like what's their role what's their time yeah yeah so there's a there's there's a few key people that you know i was having this conversation yesterday there's a few key people you definitely want to like get in good with right so the first the primary person is called the contracting officer okay the contracting officer they're the one solely responsible for that contract if it goes south that's their job right if it's successful good for them they're getting a raise right and so the contracting officer is that person that male or female that you want to reach out to um second to that um virtually every federal agency has a department it's called the osdbu is the acronym osdbu um it's the office office of small disadvantaged business utilization i always mess that up it's the osdbu office but that office is there to work with small businesses to help them land contracts okay that's their that's their sole purpose and, and so the personnel in that office, you very much want to get to know, right? Um, and then outside of the Osdebu personnel, um, there are small business liaisons inside of these departments, right? And you want to get to know them as well because they can pass opportunities out, out to you that are non-biddable opportunities. So not everything is a bid. And that's another thing to understand. You can actually win something by an agent, an agent picking up the phone and calling you and saying, hey, can you handle this? Like that's happened to my students before. I had one out of Atlanta. Uh, he, he was he was he was two weeks in. He was two weeks. Yeah. He, I, I, <laughs> yeah. So, so I had a student out of Atlanta. He he was he was working with me for two weeks, right? And so we were kind of progressing through the things, or two months. I'm sorry, working with me for two months. We were progressing through some things, and um, he gets this phone call out of the blue, and it was Army Corps of Engineers, and they needed 20 doors, right? And so they were asking him, hey, we need some we need some inventory in your area for five years, a five year deal. OK, so as misfortune would have it, I didn't find out about that phone call until two weeks later. And he was like, oh, by the way, I got this call from this <laughs> this army person about scam. some. I was like, bro, <laughs> like so that. That was a multi six figure deal. You know, that's probably a seven, eight hundred thousand dollar deal. And so so there are opportunities that exist in the federal government 
that if you understand how to maneuver in that space, you don't have to worry about competing for it. They're non-competitive no, I, deals. I don't know anybody who's like, I mean, aside from your students, I really don't know anybody in our circle who's doing it besides from you. I don't. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'll, I'll say this, yeah. like, I'm, I'm not special, right? I just, I had um, in my you're, previous you're, W-2 you're life. special to me. Well, thank you. <laughs> so in my previous W-2 life, I cut my teeth on government contract stuff. And so in second year in the STR space, I had this light bulb moment. I'm like, why am I not doing that with this? It's just a different product or service. And once we turned that switch on, it was just up and to the right. No, well, do you know uh, Anthony Gant? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. We're all, we're all talking yeah, absolutely. He's a good guy. Yeah. My guy. <laughs> with limited to no past performance in the federal contracting space, are you only looking for subcontracts with a prime or are you trying to get primes too? Mm -mm. Yeah, you can go after a prime with, with yes, with zero experience. So, yeah, like I don't, like I've only really posted one of my student wins, right? Because it was a big one. It was the biggest one. <laughs> so I posted about it. But, How um, much was it again for those that um, So initially it was $7.4 million, but it has since gone up to seven to seven six. So they added doors. Added doors. Yes. Um, and he had zero experience with government contracting. He had no past performance working with the federal government. And in less than six months, he landed that contract. What was his advantage? Noble Crawford, <laughs> the third. Access to Noble Crawford, the third. Noble um, so Sign up now. That's a good. <laughs> Noble Crawford, the third. I got a $50,000 done for you <laughs> that I'm going to die. So, my man. Uh, <laughs> So, I, mean, I mean, you'd actually be stupid not to take him up on it. <laughs> That's cheap. Yeah, so I can't even remember the question. I'm sorry. Well, because the advantage is Jeremy's advantage. Going after Prime and how Jeremy was standing out compared to all the other applications. Yeah, good question. So here, here's what's key. And a lot of us in this room, if you've played in the STR space at any level, whether you have one property or not, is being able to leverage that experience. So Jeremy, for him, he had his... He had a team, you know, he had his team. He had his systems in place. He had his processes in place, right? So he's able to take that um, and basically, you know, uh, you, you leverage that for, for this industry. And there's a way that we can, so there's an important marketing piece. Everybody take note, it's called a capability statement. It is simply like a business resume. On that capability statement, you very much want to, um, you know, talk about your past performance, especially if it's in a real estate space. And it doesn't matter what type of real estate, right? But you want to list that stuff on your capability statement. So he, he simply listed he had worked, done some Airbnbs. You know, he did some arbitrage. He, he worked with a couple of different, you know, companies in the past, stuff like that. That was, that was the, le the level of his past performance, right? But the real benefit was he was able to talk about he has systems in place to accommodate this large amount of booking. He has the processes, right? He has a team, you know, uh, between himself and his uh, VAs and, and cleaners and so on, right? And so, uh, so we're able to shape that into his uh, submittal response, um, and, and, and he ultimately won the deal. There was more to it than that, but that's the short of it. hundred percent you can rent an arbitrage yeah that that's uh more often than not that's what you'll find is the case are, there are, are your people so, going at like find like they, they get the contract like someone like, like government inquired for the contract and then they go find the rental arbitrage or is it the other way around they have yeah. mike can tell you the answer to that <laughs> so i think that the way that your guys work is like basically you you get the lead and then you go find the real estate that's, that's, that was, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's, that's, so, that's the smile. That's the so, nuggets that he gave me at a Houston conference. And that's what inspired me. Yeah, get the contract first and then the door. And you go yeah. find the door. So yeah. how much of a lead time is there between you finding the, the doors after you so, get the contract? It could how depend. It, it could depend on the scope of the contract because those contracts, you know, they vary in scale and scope. And so, um, you know, it could be three weeks. It could be three months, right? It just depends. But before you even um, submit your you know, your, your uh, response, you already know what the answer to that is, right? Because you're doing the legwork on the front end. So you know down to the dollar how much you're going to make, you know, how much time you have to put it together. You've already got all your expenses worked out. You've pre-negotiated your, your concessions with the multifamily community. You've done all of that, right? Um, and then it's just a matter of submitting. So I'm going to go here because you had one, and then I'm back to you. Advice for her 
Give me a call. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, so, so, so here's the thing. Um, she, because she's in the Navy, she didn't want to get into a conflict of interest, okay. right? And so can she do government contract stuff? Absolutely. Can she do it for the Department of the Navy? Absolutely not, right? That would be a conflict of interest, right? Could she do it with other departments? 100%. And she would be in, very, in a very good position to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my question was just if you um, think that's a um, chance of winning the bid if you've built that relationship with the department that you're bidding for. Yeah, good question. Good question. I love that. So a lot of benefits to building a relationship on the front end. One of those is a, a lot of times you'll get access so you'll be privy to stuff coming down the pipe before it goes out to bid, right? Yeah, so we've had a situation where a student has won an opportunity um, and it never went out to bid because they positioned them, yes. And so, so and there's a way to, um, there, you know, there's some other resources you can use to gain that information about uh, opportunities and contract awards that are, yeah, you know, going to be coming through the pipe for that fiscal year, um, but it's very much relationship driven. So a lot of those opportunities are solely based on relationship. Yeah, it's a good question. Okay, so we're good? We're, it's, it's one o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> we're actually exceeding our time, but man, this has been so invaluable. I mean, I follow all three of you guys, so I already know a lot of the content I that you share. You but I feel like I learned so much more by having you in this room, and thank you for being present with us and. Most of you are going to the summit, right? So um, we'll see you again for the next two days. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Can we give her a round of applause? Yeah. Thank you. Experiment Nation podcasting has changed the way